Perspectives. On the crazy and unpredictable world of professional wrestling, as a pure theory creations entertainment network presents a live, interactive show where you can be part of a conversation of all things professional wrestling, from the major leagues to the independents. This is Fatal 4-Way, live on Owen TV. From the Owen TV studio in Lake Orion, Michigan, we welcome you to the Fatal 4-Way, along with multiple-time Michigan Indie Pro Wrestling Hall of Famer, Sean Grugel, the Stan Lee of PFC, <laughs> Brian Balf, Hollywood Q, Quadell Edwards, I'm Jason Klaus. We certainly appreciate you tuning in here this week. And gentlemen, we've got a lot to talk about. A lot's on the table here. And, and as it turns out, the show kind of wrote itself with, with the schedule, which made our jobs a lot easier. We just have to navigate through the headlines. We're coming out of the WWE draft. We are just hours away from Backlash tomorrow afternoon, the next pr premium live event offering from World Wrestling e Entertainment. But before we get there, let's talk about some of the headlines that have come across our, our radar here. And the first thing that jumps out in the last two weeks before we get into a lot of the WWE talk here, we got to uh, shed some light on what's happening with All Elite Wrestling. And, of course, out of that organization, the big headline is Jack Perry's return, his attack on CEO Tony Khan, and what does this do for the ratings for All Elite Wrestling? Q, we'll, we'll start with you. Is this, is this a good way to jumpstart a renewed interest for this organization? Well... Ah, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think, you know, you might get a little bit of a buzz, maybe a small spike, but I don't think it's going to, you know, really raise it up. You know, uh, it's not going to be a big number raise, but uh, it, it's, it's a very different angle than we're used to from AEW. This is their first time doing the... Uh, the, the the heel authority figure type thing with the young bucks and everything but uh as far as the numbers go I, it, it it caused the buzz I mean we're talking about it right so you know there's a bit of a buzz but I'm not gonna I, I don't believe that we're gonna see a big jump in the numbers from this because we, we're already seeing the numbers going down dynamite already went down so, right so right. it's a it's a wait and see for me so we've seen various incarnations, Brian, of the struggle between talent and management in a in an on-air you know role here. AEW is now trying trying this formula. Now, what made it work previously in other organizations were the primary pr principal characters, right? For example, yeah. obviously the the one you go to is Austin and McMahon. That would not have worked if it hadn't been for Steve Austin and Vince McMahon. Facts. Now with this, what spearheaded this is is Perry, who has been polarizing because of all the backlash from, no pun intended, with the, with the whole CM Punk thing. Now he's here in a very prominent role, and on the opposite side of that is Tony Khan. Now, this is where it gets very tricky because Tony Khan makes no no bones about the facts he enjoys the spotlight he likes putting his name out there he likes he, he likes having his name in people's mouths is he the right guy for this and how much of the success of this angle is going to rely on his pr participation and whether or not he can actually execute it the, like you said it really falls on if he can pull off that role from his like his standpoint of being a super fan, I think it's a wait and see. It's how much is he really going to overly commit to this character. I think it really sheds a lot of light why they released the Jack Perry footage because they were trying to get that buzz going. I think they probably already had this in the bag. They have kind of knew this was what they're going to go for. <sighs> Man, 
We've seen it multiple times. I just want to, I guess I w I'm curious to see what AEW's take will be on this storyline thing that we've seen before. A lot of the storylines here today are recycled from those of the years past. What can AEW do here that's going to be different and sets this apart? That's number one. And number two, Jack Perry. Is he main event worthy? Is he the guy that should be in, in kind of like this le leadership role for the EVP side of this thing? Come on, Levi. The answer is no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's real simple. What is gonna, AEW going to do to make this stand out? Absolutely nothing. Because when you have this storyline, it's a rose in the center of a bunch of dog turd storylines. <laughs> so that one's actually going to smell and look good. My problem with this is, is we're seeing the NWO all over again. You know, this is exactly what this is. Here we have Tony Khan comes out. Granted, he took one nice bump from one belly shot from Jack Perry. Dropped like a sack of potatoes. Yeah. But, you know, fact of the matter is, is all the other storylines in AEW are so god-awful. You have the Learning Tree, Chris Jericho. You have the Lionheart, Chris Jericho. You have... What's he going to be next Wednesday, Chris Jericho? You know, go away, Chris Jericho. Right, the go away, Chris <laughs> Jericho. You know, uh, what's, you know, how much blood is John Moxley going to bleed this week? You know, when you have a bunch of garbage, but you have one good, interesting thing, I think I saw the ratings jump by like 75,000 viewers, was it. Um, Jack Perry isn't believable to me. Hall and Nash, Hogan, they were believable to me. The Young Bucks, not believable to me. You know, I think this storyline, unless it gets some real fire behind it, like, and when I say fire, I mean star power behind it, this storyline isn't going anywhere fast. It's kind of been uh, a general consensus here, uh, especially online with all the chatter online. If you have an opinion on this, we invite you to call into the show live and join the conversation, 810 Nine. Now, moving on from that, unless you guys have anything else you want to add to this particular storyline or anything else, I would like to EW. say, uh, I would like to say that Jack Perry does make some great faces. <laughs> <laughs> if that's one thing he does good, he He's, makes great faces. If he could see him behind all that Chewbacca fur, he calls a <laughs> beard and hair. <laughs> I don't know. There's just some like. I can totally buy into him as a heel mm -hmm. because he has a very punchable face. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> so I can understand from that perspective. Switching gears, because we have a lot of news and notes with WWE, as you can imagine, a lot of moving and shaking going on, not just what happened this past week over a two-night period of time with the WWE you know, draft for 2024. We're going to dive into that here in a little bit. Uh, but a lot of unrest, um, especially among the IWC, as far as they're concerned, was laid to rest here, and a number of contracts were renewed. Prominently, uh, the two biggest names that I had seen during my research on the socials, as it were, were Drew McIntyre and Seth Rollins. And to me, if I'm WWE, these were the two guys they had to lock down for long-term, you know, new deals, new contracts. These, these are main event guys. These mm -hmm. are, you know, up, among the upper echelon. So now that with Rollins and McIntyre are locked down, is there anybody else, Q, that you would make as the next priority to make sure that they don't go anywhere, even if their contracts are not up this year? Is there one person or two people you're like, we have to lock these guys down for a good 10 years at least? Well, I kind of see a guarantee that uh, Becky Lynch is going to sign. Now, well, well, for yeah, sure. That's, that's, that's a given now. I mean, uh, uh, who else we got on that list? Um, well, this and, is the and, and I know And I know Finn Balor, he, he signed as well mm -hmm. um, right before McIntyre and everybody. But uh, – I believe that everyone's going to get approached, I believe. Everyone that's on that list, they got rid of the one that they really didn't have anything for, which was gender. He's been hindered. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> but, uh, you know, I, I, I believe everyone else that's, you know, 
among that upper echelon status, they're going to get approached. We know Becky Lynch is going to be the next one. A, a number of, uh, of releases here in the last few weeks, Brian, we talked, you know, he mentioned, you know, Jinder Mahal. Um, uh, what's the guy from NXT? Drew Gulak yep. was, was just, was just yeah. released. A number of them. Is there is there any of the people that were released where you're like, ooh, we need to bring these guys back. We missed the boat on this. Or are they cutting out the right people? No, I think there's – all of them got cut that needed to. I think there's plenty more they could still yet cut if they wanted to. But I don't think there was any, like, oh, no, <laughs> moments out of that list. I'll agree with that. And that's usually a thing, Sean, when there is a big list – of, of releases there's always one or two guys where we are just we're peed right off about it like how could they let this guy go the one guy that really jumps out that i i had that moment about was bray wyatt man when man. when he got released in 21 i was like you have got to be kidding me how do upset. you release this i was too <laughs> man i mean i remember someone shedding a tear with elias as well <laughs> For real, <laughs> but this, these new releases, the only ones I was kind of disappointed in because I really had high hopes for them was Veer and Sanga. Uh, I really think they could have had, ex- well, <laughs> you know, they, they really didn't get shot. And I really think, you know, why would you bring back the AOP and get rid of Veer and Sanga? You had two, you know, big dudes, scary dudes, as opposed to the AOP, who I still think are garbage, still think are unsafe. But I think, you know, with all the tours of India and whatnot, I think Viren Sangha could have been very beneficial for the Fed. Um, but, you know, uh, am, I, am I mad about it? No, because like Brian said, there's plenty more that could be cut. You look at the NXT roster, you look at some of the guys that were cut today, and we're going, who are they? Who the heck are they? <laughs> right. So. Yeah, another long, you know, another long list was uh, broken by BleacherReport.com. Uh, as far as a, a rash of releases, primarily from NXT, uh, Drew Gulak was the prominent name of, of yeah. any re- recognition, and that's, you know, let's call it what it is. That's using that term lightly. He just did not make the splash that everybody wanted him to. And this the whole controversy with him and Ronda Rousey <coughs> probably me. played a little bit of a hand in that. Absolutely. Just to, just, just yeah, to, uh, a big hand. You know, clear, you know, <laughs> cut ties in. You're starting you're starting yeah. to see that. There's more of a zero tolerance with oh, a yeah. lot of allegations that are coming out. And that's not you know, that's taking the whole McMahon thing and putting it on the side burner because that's its own ball of wax, as it were. Um, a number a couple of title changes happened since the last time we were here live on ON TV. And once again, if you have a comment or a question or anything like that, you can either call in the show live. The number is at the bottom of your screen, or you can join the live chat on the Orion Owen TV live feed on Facebook. We mentioned her here a minute ago, Becky Lynch, uh, obviously signing a new deal here. If she hasn't already, or is going is going to, especially now that she is once again the world women's uh, champion on Monday Night Raw, having won a battle. <laughs> <laughs> having, Excuse having me. won a battle royal. Now this gentleman comes on the heels of Rhea Ripley having to vacate the title because of injury. Brian, I guess for star power wise, Becky Lynch is your go-to here because regardless of what we may think about her, she still has a considerable fan base. But if it wasn't Becky Lynch, who should we have given this golden opportunity to? I I, I don't think she's going to hold it long. I think she's going to drop it to live. I think they're going to feed like Kyrie Singh and different ones to live until Rhea comes back so they can do that feud. I don't know why they wouldn't have just gave it to live right away. Right. That doesn't make sense to me. Like why hand it to Becky to hold it for a hot second? Yeah, I would have rather seen him do that than give it to Becky. It, I just, especially if they're not going to have her hold it long, it doesn't really make sense to me. Maybe they have something planned that I don't see, but it, it's it's really hard to say because it seems like the the booking pr- practices right now is kind of up and down. You know, bit. they're really. Bit. Like man, they'll they'll have a blockbuster week this week, next week. Mm, man, yeah. you know they didn't, they haven't been able to maintain that kind of of momentum. 
Sean, they're putting so much stock into Liv Morgan right now, <laughs> trying to make her a main event player for the Monday Night Raw women's division. What is missing here? Why is she not connecting on the way that a lot of people want her to? I think it has a lot to do with the believability. You know, you look at her, she's like five foot one. How tall is Rhea Ripley? How tall is Nia Jax? You know, I, I don't want to see Liv with the title. I don't want to see the feud with Rhea Ripley. Um, I'm not a Liv Morgan fan. I've never bought into her from day one from when she come out with the backwards hat looking like a Bella, a Bella twin, you know. Um, not those. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, but, but for me personally, you know, uh, you asked who you would have rather seen win the title in that battle royal. Man, they could have done so much with that. Like, could you imagine an underdog like Maxine Dupree with all the controversy that surrounded her if she would have went, went over for that title? Or even better, you guys know I'm a big fan. Give that title to Tiffany Stratton and let her, it's definitely Tiffy time. <laughs> let her run with that thing. Uh, you know, talk about an underdog story. That's what you want. You can't keep having the same old same old. And this is what we talked about a few weeks ago with the IWC. If everything is so damn predictable, then everything is so damn boring. It needs to stop. We need to have some unpredictability and we need to have that excitement back. I mean, WrestleMania was money. Now, all of a sudden, as soon as Cody Rhodes wins the title, it's just kind of like plateaued and we're just riding it and see where it goes next night don't like it we're going to get to that here later on in in the program um q <laughs> let, i <laughs> actually looking to choose your words wisely i, I, I see know, right? I know. <laughs> <sighs> okay let me get your opinion on on the ricochet winning the wwe speed title because I feel like if we go down this sidebar we will spend a considerable amount of time focusing on the women's divisions for both Raw and SmackDown and we can tie a lot of that into when we start breaking down the draft results mm -hmm. here but Ricochet wins the WWE speed title we kind of called that here two, two yeah. weeks ago what does this do for for Ricochet if anything it gives him the speed. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'll be honest. I, I didn't know what the hell this was <laughs> up until like a couple of weeks ago when they're like, yeah, you got to go on yeah. X and it happens here. And it's just, it seems yeah. like a 205 Live thing. This here. is the arcade version of WWE. Oh, good. Don't, I like arcades. Don't, <laughs> don't ruin it. Yeah, this is where you get your little game controller and you have a three minute match. Mortal Kombat style or whatever it is, and whoever wins, whoever health bar is, and you know at the lowest they lose, you know. So there you go. This is just the it's the this is the game. This is the video game right here. You know, you put it on your little fast guy, and uh, to be honest, I, is the concept just the time limit or? Is, I don't know because I really don't when I looked at concept. that tournament, it was like, all right, here's Ricochet, here's Bronson Reed. One of those two are gonna get it. One, when you think of speed, you think of Ricochet. When you think of Bronson Reed, you think of the opposite of speed. Right. So it's like or squash, maybe. Yeah. It's just a bunch of squash matches, or right. So it's 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 a very weird concept that I I'm not bought into yet. You know, maybe maybe five years from now I'll be bought into it, but right now, man, I don't know what. It's probably because they didn't have enough belts. <laughs> I, I was gonna say let, let 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 me get serious here. Let me throw my two cents <laughs> in here. You know what this title was designed for. It was designed so Ricochet would stick around. They don't want him going to AEW. They don't want him going to TNA because they want to keep Samantha Irvin happy. Say it's not him, it's she, Samantha. She, yeah, she she is absolutely incredible. One of the best announcers they've had in the last 10 years. The only way you're going to keep her happy is by keeping Ricochet happy. And the only way you're going to keep Ricochet happy is putting a title on him to, to hold him over until they can figure yeah. out what they want to do with him later on down the line. Because he was in the heavyweight title hunt at one point in time, and then he mm -hmm. just kind of went... <laughs> Splat and done. So yeah. you give him a you give him a secondary title. He's happy. The wife's happy. They stick around. He doesn't get resigned, and everything is happy in WWE land. I can understand that that premise, but at the same time, they've tried to do things with Ricochet. He held the United States title, and it went absolutely nowhere. 
Intercontinental title as well. Like, he just does not r resonate with the main roster crowd. The main roster crowd has its own particular likes and dislikes that mm -hmm. does not always correlate from NXT. Brian, how many you know talks have we had at our shoot job of this guy being called up, this girl being called up to the main roster after having phenomenal runs in NXT? They come to Raw, they come to SmackDown. Yeah, the first two weeks, there's all this hype, all this buzz, but once they start rolling, man, the crowd just does not care. What, uh, what is the difference here? I, I can clearly remember when Rick, Ricochet got called up. It was Ricochet and Aleister Black teaming up, and they main evented NXT that last night. It was an amazing match. And then they, yeah, they hit the main event, and it was like Aleister Black treaded water at least before he left for AEW. Ricochet just plummeted from the beginning. Because right. Aleister Black has a character. <clears throat> Ricochet doesn't have a character. He has no character. I mean, he might have a little charisma when he comes out with a smile, but when he was wrestling Lucha Underground and he was uh, Prince Puma, at least he had something behind him. I would love to see him turn heel and go to, like, the Pride or something. He needs a switch up. He's got to have some type of change because it's not working. Are they heel, though? Like, what are they? That's the question. Like, the Pride are, like, one week they're heel, the next week they're, like, face. It's, it's so confusing with all these... Groups. Well, as we look into, and um, we'll use this as the transition to, to kind of look at the overall concept and the results of the WWE draft, they made a, you know, a few significant announcements at the, on, at the onset of the draft, which uh, had started last fr Friday night on SmackDown and concluded this past Monday on Raw. Now, the interesting thing is, is that these rosters are not locked down until next until this you know this coming Monday, and that's with SmackDown here tonight. You got Backlash live tomorrow afternoon, so there's still a lot of moving and shaking that goes on here. But the champions were off the board. The champions were not eligible to be drafted this year, which was kind of a departure than previous drafts because usually every superstar is eligible, and that's when we saw. One world champion go from one show to the axe flip flop this that the other thing that was not the case this year, which I which I can understand. Let's keep the titles on their their respective shows. Roman Reigns pulled out of the draft. Brock Lesnar not mentioned in the draft. Jimmy Uso, where is he at? Like, there's a lot of question marks as we come out of this thing. Like, what was the point in all of this? There was only a couple of names that made an actual switch from one show to to the other, but you, but you're looking at at this lineup. Q, is there one show that won the draft in terms of how this roster is now laid out? Yeah, they look the same, right? I mean, but uh, I would. It's hard to say. It's it's really uh, up to the booking at this point. Like who. Is gonna get the push. I mean, but you really, you got I me. Mean, you got your CM Punk and your Drew McIntyre's and your Seth Rollins on Raw. So Raw is looking very strong, but it's up to the booking now. Like, what happens after this draft? This useless draft. You know, it's, it. I, I, I'm kind of curious to see now that we have general managers. Are we gonna have trades? You know, in the middle of the year or something like that. You know, are we gonna have some people switching brands? by the general managers, you know, not just showing up one day on another show or like, you know, how people are still showing up in NXT even though they got drafted to that's a whole other thing. I didn't like the way this was formatted. So, uh, I don't know. I, I don't know who's stronger right now. It's, it's a wait and see for me. Brian, if they incorporated more of a legit sports approach with the draft. He mentioned trades, because that's something yep. that, that we see in football and baseball during the course of a season, like that's legit. Is something like that, could could that be incorporated, with, especially with two very strong uh, GMs in place now, with Nick Aldis for SmackDown, Adam Pierce on Raw, 
two very strong characters. They know how to talk. They know how to carry themselves. If they took this as a, in a more legit sports approach, could this save the concept of the draft? Absolutely, especially if they, like, actually, if, I feel like they put zero time into the draft. I feel like this is what we'll do, blah, 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 blah. But if they actually actually sat down and wrote and worked it out, it could be pretty cool. Like you said, like they could even do the trades at the draft like they do in the NFL draft. Mm-hmm. They're like, all right, Raw decides that they're going to give their next two picks away for f- the f- four picks in a row against SmackDown. But, I mean, they don't, and they continue to break the rules. They continue to have rules that don't make sense where they draft some people that are injured, other ones are off the draft. Sometimes they're drafting groups. Sometimes they're drafted as singles. Uh, on your question to Q, I think SmackDown won when it comes to women talent, and I think Raw is going to win when it comes to male talent. Very good point. And I I was looking at that earlier while, while Q was talking, and I was looking at the SmackDown side, and it's the women. Bianca, that really Jade, yeah. Nia. It's... I mean, and, I mean t- Tiffany's... You Tiffany know, is, is there now yep. um, T- Tegan Knox, who if she, with the right opportunity could really be a star and <laughs> the wild card in all of it's Nia Jax and that you know she you could do a number of things with her which leads me to this question new rosters on both shows this is where the booking really has to get they need to tighten it up. They need to start really establishing, much like you said, what are the pride? Are they heels? Are they faces? They're switching back and forth. Do we take a more neutral approach moving forward in this new era with WWE to let the fans make the decisions who who is going to be their personal good guys or bad guys? Or do we go back and, and establish these are the heels, these are the faces, these are the groups, and let's roll with this. <laughs> it's funny that you're asking me this because you're asking the indie guy about wrestling. And I think wrestling should be a natural progression when it comes to the fan base. I think we should let the fans decide as to who's their favorite. I think we should let the wrestlers go out off script, cut their promos. I think, you know, we should have guys you know, give direction to these guys where we want to see your character go. But I want to see these wrestlers go out on their own and flourish and let the crowd decide what they are going to be. I mean, look, look at Steve Austin, for God's sakes. We had the ringmaster. He cuts the 316 promo. Boom, he's the biggest star in the world. You know, you have the Miz come out. Everyone knows him from the real world right off the bat. He's one of the biggest heels ever. You know, let the fans decide because while we while we can write these storylines these guys you know just show them the door but let them go through it and create their own path you know that's what i would like to see that's the one thing that's really been missing in the last era you know especially the the pg era of wwe it's everything has been so manufactured there's not there's not that wiggle room to explore your creativity and things of this nature that's what made some of the biggest stars of that era, the stars that they were because they were allowed <clears throat> to express themselves. Mm-hmm. So um, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna switch th- things up a little bit. We are gonna run a quick timeout. When we come back, we're gonna do the Indy Roundup. We're gonna look at Brian's Mount Rushmore and we will close out by looking at the Backlash premium live event that takes place a t- a tomorrow afternoon from Leon, France. That and more, and you can join the conversation. Get on deck, 810-331-2829, or join the conversation on Facebook. With that, we'll be right back with more of the Fatal 4-Way here on ONTV. All About Connections is a 90-minute suicide prevention training hosted by the North Oakland Community Coalition. This training uses the QPR method to educate and prepare participants to recognize warning signs of suicidal ideation and supply resources to their friends and family. We offer All About Connections to strengthen our bonds and ensure the Lake Orion community is fully supported by the people around them. We are available for ages 14 and up and can customize your training to your group. Whether it is a business owner and their employees or a group of parents with their future college students, 
This is a great opportunity to connect with one another and build confidence that everyone is prepared to help their friends and family in a crisis. If you would like to schedule a training or learn more about All About Connections, email Jill McCollum at jmccollum at nocmi.org. This old Adam's dear, but in East, very evil, very famous. I found he's a fan of the fatal four-way. Sean Housing, Jason Housing, Brian Housing, and Q Housing. Well, I know Brian Q from Impractical Jokesters, said you. Anyways, my from wrestling fans, fans are after calling wrestling show on TV. Well, congrats to you, and a curse to you as well. So, this is from the very good, very evil Dan Housing. So, you know what? Uh, we're going to curse the fan of the Fatal 4-Way because uh, it is very nice, very evil. So, this has been spun back around onto you, and you're cursed. We interrupt our program to bring you this important message. Well, um, every year we honor our volunteers at our volunteer banquet. Um, it's always a good time, and unfortunately, one of our winners couldn't make it. And we want to call attention to the Klaus and Q show with Jason and Codell. Um, and we're going to present you with Producer of the Year. Now, this is a, a, a prestigious award here at Owen TV. And um, basically what it is, it's to honor the way you have developed uh, your program and how it's grown over the years and just how impressed we are with the production quality uh, that you have for the Klaus and Q show. The, the great thing about your program is it has always been growing and advancing. It started out you, your wrestling roots here in the studio with uh, uh, MWO and all that good stuff was great. Said, but uh, to advance your program into an inspirational, aspirational type uh, message is fantastic. It's something we don't have here at Owen TV. And as your show has progressed, now we have Collins. You know, you're really experimenting. You're going live. You're the first of its kind here at Owen TV to have a call-in show. I think in almost 30 years. So we're really excited about uh, what's coming next with Fatal 4-Way, which has uh, Klaus and Q has developed into this new exciting program to go live and have call-ins and all that great stuff. So congratulations. Keep up what you're doing because you are an inspiration not only to other volunteers, but the staff here at ONTV TV as well. So congratulations on your award for Producer of the Year. Wow. Now back to our show. Wow. Pretty wow. awesome, man. We only have one, so you have to do joint <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations, guys. Uh, for man. Joe as well. Man, this is live oh, yeah, TV, is awesome. so. <laughs> wow. That's that's pretty amazing, guys. Congratulations to you both. Wow, that's awesome. That's your birthday man. present. Man, um, that mean that means a lot. That means a lot. Wow. A rare speechless moment not, from Jason Klaus. Did not see that coming. Did not see that coming. After we just got cursed. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I I um, I want, I want to congratulations coming. Thank you guys. It's it's very Thank rare you that you see Jason without words. <laughs> yeah. So I'm glad this is being taped right now. <laughs> Man, we uh <laughs> Wow. Man, that that definitely caught us off guard, but we do thank you guys. We thank this network. I mean, Joe has been nothing but great to us. You know, this whole experience has been, you know, an awesome, awesome experience. And we just, we just want to impact people. You know, we want to impact people. We want to help people. And we want people to be entertained and help people be better. And if we have a small part of that, you know, and I'm, I'm grateful. I'm quite sure that we are grateful. We are privileged to have an opportunity to do this, you know, regardless of what the genre is, you know, 
my involvement, my personal involvement with ON TV goes back to like 2006. You know, I've spent a lot of time in a number of you know different genres working with the amazing people here at ON TV and the support that uh, they have shown us throughout the years, throughout all of our crazy ideas and endeavors, they they entertain that. And in turn, it's given a lot of people a platform to live their dreams. And Q and I are, you know, what started out as, you know, a motivational show to inspire people, to help people, and things of that nature has you know, growing into this, where I personally, I get to sit here, tw you know, every other week with three of the greatest men I've ever known. I put, uh, I put a lot of, I put a lot of time and effort into everything under the PFC umbrella and the ONTV umbrella because we are an extension of them, and I take that very seriously. So to be recognized on that for, I mean, I, this is not lost on me what this means. And uh, I'm just so thankful and, and appreciative for that. Uh, let's try to get back on track here. Uh, Another commercial break. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you, Ian and Joe and, and everybody for everything, seriously. All right, uh, switching gears to get back on track. Uh, WWE is going to present Backlash live on pay-per-view and on the Peacock Networks with a special start time of 1 p.m. in the afternoon because it is being held in Lyon, France. This is going to be the first pay-per-view event, premium live event to take place in the country of France. Uh, look, WWE has made a lot of effort to expand in international cities, countries, th things of this nature, and by and large, the reception has been nothing short of amazing. What can we expect in France for their first big event here t tomorrow, Q? Uh... Well, the card isn't that strong, but the fact that they're in France is, is pretty big, you know, and it, and it kind of takes me back to uh, when they did, I think that was Backlash when they did Puerto Rico. Yes. Was it? And that yep. was, that was a fun show. It was just, the crowd was just so hype from open to close, and that's, that's what I'm hoping to see tomorrow from France. I know, you know. Those Puerto Ricans, boy. <laughs> I mean, they're on, you know, they, they're, they're, they're on a whole different level. But uh, That's what made Backlash stand out last yeah, year. Yeah. was that, that crowd. That, that crowd was fire. Man, so I'm, 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 I'm hoping that, uh, and I did watch the, the press conference they had today, and the crowd was pretty, pretty hot for it, you know. So uh, I hope that kind of like drags into the, the show tomorrow. And, man. Well, they're going to be there for SmackDown on. Yeah, for, SmackDown. Yeah, yeah for SmackDown to, tonight. tonight. Yeah, and I'm glad they're doing that too because usually they do the, uh, they'll tape, they'll do a pre-tape. Yeah. Uh, SmackDown. So I'm glad they're doing two shows, and uh, man, I, I'm expecting something nice. Hopefully, even with the weak card, I'm expecting something nice. Uh <laughs> we'll have to wait and see. Let's break this card down real quick, then we'll do the indie roundup, and we'll fi finish off with Mount Rushmore. Only five matches have been signed for this thing so far, at least made public uh, in, in terms of what is on tap for Backlash. Let's start off with this big tag team match. Randy Orton, Kevin Owens against the Bloodline, Solo, <coughs> Sokoa, and Tabataga. Sean, this is going to be Tabataga's biggest uh opportunities since c coming to WWE. Seems like right now the bloodline is is in a must-win s situation with this being the first pay-per-view event after WrestleMania. We all know what, what happened there. Uh, where, where do you see with, with this tag match here? Oh, it's definitely going to have to uh, 
go to Randy Orton and Kevin Owens because you're going to see interference from the Usos and you know that's going to set up the feud for Bloodline versus Bloodline. Just my take on that because where else are you going to go if they do beat Randy and Kevin at this point? Right. Okay. Orton and Owens, you know, for a lot of fans, this is an all-star team. Uh, does I mean. Both individually, they're among the biggest names in, in WWE. Could Orton and Owens b- benefit from becoming a tag team here and focusing on, on a, a depleted tag team you know, p- pitcher? I, you know my opinion. I hate when they take superstars and put them together and call it a tag team. <coughs> <coughs> oh, sorry about that. Um, it's not a tag team to me. I, I, I like tag teams that gel together and work. I don't think they're going to win. I think it will be the bloodline. I think we're going to see Jacob Fatu. Oh, good one. Is that where you're going with this? Yeah, he took the words right out of my mouth. I yeah. figured yeah, he, he, as soon as he said that, I said, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I believe that we will see Jacob Fatu interfere in this match. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, I did hear that uh, Jimmy actually has a real injury. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, so you might, we might not see the Usos yet. But, uh, well, we're still very early in the year, and if yeah. we're marching <clears throat> towards war games, which won't be until the middle of November, war, 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 <laughs> war. Uh, we still got <laughs> a long ways to go. We've got S- SummerSlam to, you know, build in, so there's a number of different things here. Um, there's... Four championship matches that are signed for Backlash as of right now, and the, for the majority of them, you could go either way. You could make an argument uh, for who would walk out with that particular championship, but the one that seems like, at least in my opinion, is a shoe in to see a the crowning of new champions would be Bianca Belair and Jade Cargill challenging Asuka and Kyrie Sane for the WWE Women's Tag Team Championship. Uh, where do you see this? Does Asuka and, Car- and, and Kyrie stand a chance with, with this? No, no <laughs> chance. I mean, B- Bianca's kind of no. taking Jade under her wing. And, yeah. you know, this is going to be a way for Jade to grow and become, uh, you know, uh, bigger than Bianca. And eventually that's where you're going to see that feud head to. Yeah. I think we all know it's exactly what's going to happen. We're gonna, I think they'll take the belts. Eventually something's going to happen. We're going to see the feud between Bianca and Jade. It's what everyone wants to see anyways. But you got to space it out. Bianca and Jade could become that tag team that they really center the women's tag team championship around because they need something. I mean, I know you're sitting shaking your head because they're too established as single stars. Can I just say it real quick? Dan yeah. Housen already said it. Those titles are cursed. So uh, <laughs> That's true. That's true. There, do we even need women's tag team championships at this point, Q? Uh, Especially with this, with the perceived notion that, it, that they are cursed. <laughs> like legit, because it seems like every time a, a, a team wins these titles, somebody's getting hurt or something is happening that derails the the lineage of yeah. the of this title it's been that way from day one it seems like well hopefully it's now broken <laughs> with oscar and Kyrie because they they managed to stay healthy uh, but do they need tag team titles not with the roster they have, or you can say maybe they need more tag teams. So it's it's one or the other. You need you either need to get rid of the tag titles, or you need to get some tag teams. And Bianca and Jade, that's a short term tag team. So that they're they're not going to anchor the division through them, but they are going to build something between them with these tags. On the spot, what do you call a tag team of Bianca and Jade? Priceless. Oh, I can't do that. Because <laughs> <laughs> uh, Cody Rhodes and, and Ted DiBiase were priceless at one time, weren't they? 
I don't remember what the name of the team was. Yeah. But that was the first thing that came to mind when you said that. Well, what's yours? I don't have one. <laughs> I don't have one. That's a damn good question, though. What would you call a tag team? But right now, we Absolutely have... Absolutely fabulous. Abs and caps. Uh, no. they're both, they're both yeah, six, we but... lost our call. Oh. oh. Man, I answered it, too. Oh, so I, call I, back. Yeah. They, heard, they heard the joke. <laughs> Give it a call back. <laughs> Well, let's move on here on the card. A triple threat match for the WWE Women's t Title. Ba Bailey will defend against T Tiffany Stratton and Naomi in this one. Sean, you're going with Tiffany in this, aren't you? Tiffany for everything. Okay. Everything. <laughs> okay. Fair, I mean, fair enough. Where Where are you at on this? Uh, I think Bailey's going to win. I would love for Tiffany Stratton to win, but I think Bailey's going to pull it off. Like I said, I think you're going to see. I think Tiffany's going to end up being the queen of the ring, so I think they're going to wait off for that. I, I guess I should have said what I want to happen and what's going to happen are two different things. <laughs> yeah. I want Tiffy, but Bailey's going to go over. Well, what's your pick here? Bailey is definitely going over, but for Tiffy, I want to say for Tiffy, there's either two things that's going to happen with her. She's either going to win, or both, she's either going to win the queen of the ring, or she's going to win the Money in the Bank. Both, because we're going to get a pink Money in the Bank suitcase. Oh, yeah, let's get the be pink. Yeah, let's... <laughs> oh, yeah. You can market that. Yes, mm -hmm. she has to win that. I'm with it. Why is Naomi here? To take the pin. <laughs> <laughs> yes, someone's got to take it. Fair enough. All right. The two world championships are on the line at Backlash. You will see for the World Heavyweight Championship, main event Jey Uso is going to challenge... Damian Priest, you and I talked a little bit about this at work last night, about this match, Jey Uso getting this. Where was I? You were eating. Oh. Yeah, it was during lunch. <laughs> a little, peel, peeling the curtain back a little bit there. Um, Damian Priest, and I've gone on record, I am not sold on this guy as world champion yet. I, I know he's very early in his run. This is going to be his first big test since cashing in Money in the Bank at WrestleMania. Jay Uso, they're really tying into the main event uh, nickname here. Sean, is Jay the right guy for Damien's first title match? He is. He is so over with the crowd right now. Um, but Damien's really going to have to work to, you know, get himself up to a level to where he's going to be believable in the fans' eyes to take down Jay because he is so over with the fans right now. I'm not buying into Damien either. Quite honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if they cut his run short and actually gave the title to Jay, as crazy as that sounds, uh, as a transitional champion. Because I, I just don't think Damien's going to, he's not going to sell the merchandise, as they say. Right, right. People don't like purple. <laughs> <laughs> Minus this. Oh, does, wow. <laughs> does Jay Uso stand a chance of becoming champion? Do you mean Lynch? the number one drafted man in the WWE draft this year? Yeah. The first drafted guy? It's true. No, no, he absolutely does not. <laughs> Jeez. That's one of my problems with the draft. Uh, I, I feel like we'll see some type of interference from Judgment Day, despite the fact that Damien says he doesn't want it. I think they're, we're going to see Damien turn face. I think we're going to see a split from Judgment Day, and I think they're going to try to make him a face. Is that going to be the right call to make for, for Damian Priest? Is that what he needs as a face for us? Uh, I don't know if that's what he – I believe that that, it might, that might happen, but uh, I don't know if that's what he needs because the fans might not buy into him as a face. So uh, They did in NXT. He was, yeah, he was – he was a lot hotter in NXT. I think, you know what, right now, to me, both Damien and Jay are kind of like in a weird spot right now. Um, to me, Jay, Jay is over with the crowd, but in the ring, he kind of lost his momentum since that Jimmy match. Like, he became that one-trick super kick pony. Yeah. I mean, so it's – he has – I don't even see a high-quality match – with these two because of the styles it, it's not mixing well i mean maybe they will surprise me i hope they do because i want to see a good show <laughs> <laughs> but 
We shall see. I don't know. I'm going, but I'm going with Damien. Oh, yeah. I gotta say, we just got a comment in the room. It says, who sells the merch for the Judgment Day? Hint, it's a woman. Mommy. <laughs> <laughs> Way to go, Alex well Steele. Said. Well said. <laughs> uh, the, uh, the main event of this show is going to be Cody Rhodes, the American Nightmare. Oh. The undisputed WWE champion. I can't believe I actually have to say that out loud, but here we are. <laughs> he will defend the title against AJ Styles. I've never rooted more for AJ Styles than I am tomorrow afternoon as a part of Backlash. <laughs> um, on paper, this is something of a dream match of sorts. These two guys have had parallel careers, but they've never met one-on-one, -on -one, especially on a big spotlight stage like this. It's Rhodes, it's Styles, it's the WWE title. Where do you see this one going, Q? Is this the uh, match of the night? <laughs> Sadly, it might be. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, it's AJ is, he's, he's not the guy to take the belt. I mean, I would like to see AJ get another run because uh, I've always been rooting for AJ. I've been a big AJ fan. Uh, well, he's phenomenal. He is phenomenal. Yeah, yeah he's phenomenal. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> Cody, I believe, is not losing. After after the big story they told, you know, at WrestleMania, they're not taking a title off of Cody at a backlash event right after WrestleMania, right after a a weak draft, right after a no build feud. Uh, no, no, they're not good. I see a retain. AJ Styles is. Uh you know, one of the most accomplished wrestlers in WWE. I keep know. hearing that. <laughs> you don't. I haven't seen it. And I, I mean, like I said, I had a like dark period where I stopped watching it. Everyone talked about AJ Styles once I got back in there. But, I mean, can you guys tell me a great match he's had in the last few years? Yeah, John Cena. Man. Did you see that match? No, I From guess From SummerSlam? Not. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I, okay, you, now you're telling me that John Cena also had a great match. So now I'm really interested in this match. <laughs> seems, I mean, for them two had a great match or a great match in general? It was a great match it in was general. A, it was All a, right. Yeah, a good one with Roman, I'll, too. Yeah. Yep. I'll rewatch these matches. <laughs> I, maybe I'm just an anti-AJ guy, but I just don't see it. He looks so much like Billy Ray Cyrus to me. Uh, yeah, okay, I can understand I'm just, that. I'm just, I'm just lost. And I can see where that would derail any, any hope of you. <laughs> I'm gonna, now I'm only going to refer to it as Hockey Man, Hockey Talk Man 2.0. Oh, don't do that. Jeez, oh, don't do that. Don't talk oh, about like you need a fan. I, uh, oh, my God. You can't. Hockey is. Whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa. Hockey, <laughs> hockey, hockey Talk on. Man. Hockey Talk Man. I thought you were referring to me. Jeez. Oh, for crying out loud. We are going completely. Completely off the rails. <laughs> Cody Rhodes. I'm going to take Cody. He's okay. got brand new entrance gear. Of course, he's going to win. He's got <laughs> entrance gear every week. <laughs> There's a couple new gem crystals on it. Yeah, he's good. Yeah. So, <laughs> Backlash has been has tr traditionally been supposed to be, in a lot of aspects, that first kickoff to the new season in WWE. We know Cody Rhodes is going to be very prominently f featured for the foreseeable future. AJ Styles pr provides a unique uh, you know, opportunity here, but is there somebody else that would have b benefited from this this title shot? In yeah. France? Yeah. Jacques Rougeau. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. I mean, I, you know LA Knight, yeah, would have been perfect for this match because let's face it, right now, Cody we, Rhodes isn't the American Nightmare. He, is <laughs> <laughs> he, he He's not the American Nightmare, he's the American Plateau. I mean, right now, the World Heavyweight Championship picture is so boring as, as far as I'm concerned since WrestleMania. Um, they really need to put some fire underneath that belt. They really need to find a guy that's going to be able to match with Cody, and I really want to see Roman back as soon as possible. I really want to see Cody turn heel. Yes. I feel like a heel Cody Rhodes would really put him on that platform that everybody wants him to be. And they can say that he's there all, he, all they want. He's not. The numbers do not lie. 
Um, listen, I know we're uh, we're running up to the top of the hour here, so let's uh, run through the Indy Roundup real quick, and then we're going to main event it with the Mount Rushmore. So, Sean, what is happening in the world of independent yeah, wrestling? That's my favorite graphic. Um, sweet. So, look, it's real quick. Uh, this week I'm not featuring wrestling shows. I'm featuring wrestling schools because I have gotten – quite a few messages through the old book of faces about how can I go and be a professional wrestler. Now, the guy who I went and trained with is no longer around, a sweet daddy, Malcolm Monroe, and I also trained with his son, the DBA. Now, I'm going to go ahead and give you the list of the few schools that I did get, but it is up to you to go and check on the backgrounds of these trainers. I can give you a little bit of information about them, but I highly suggest you see who they are, check out where they've been, what they've done, what promotions they've worked for, and who they've trained, okay? So, without any further ado, the very first wrestling school I'm going to give you is the House of Truth. It's located in Centerline, Michigan, and the owner is Truth Martini. If you know anything about Truth Martini, he's a very prominent manager from Ring of Honor Wrestling. He's trained a number of people, including the guy that cursed us earlier, Dan Housen, Alex Shelley, <laughs> Zach Gowan, Juice Robinson, and Karrion Cross's current wife and manager, Scarlett. You can check them out at hotwrestlingschool.com. Uh, next is the CIW Wrestling Academy, located in Hudson, Michigan. The owner is Phil Monahan. If you don't know Phil Monahan, he has done tours in Japan. He's a very prominent promoter in West Michigan. He's one of the trainers along with Big Mike Elgin. You know who Big Mike Elgin is, New Japan Pro Wrestling, Ring of Honor Wrestling. Uh, you can check them out at CIWProWrestling.com. Next up, we have Pure Pro Wrestling, located in Goodrich, Michigan. The owner is Joe Bird. He wrestles as Xavier Justice. Xavier Justice did go over in, overseas to India, trained uh, wrestlers at the Great Khali's Wrestling School. Ooh. I believe uh, Veer and Sangha were a couple of his students at one point in time. Not exactly 100% sure on that, but you know, I, plenty of videos of him and Khali training these guys. Uh, he's got a host, a host of trainers there, including Dylan Knight, Aaron Orion, uh, quite a few uh, notable gradu graduates, uh, Rohit Roju from uh, Impact Wrestling. He was their X Division champion. You can check them out at pureprowrestling.net. Uh, New Edge Pro Wrestling Academy, located in Waterford, Michigan. The owner is Sean Tyler. He's also the trainer. Uh, very prominent Michigan wrestler here. Uh, wrestles in the tag team, The Purge. We just did an interview with his former partner, Schwartzy, when they were the kosher club back in the day. Great wrestler. Check out their school. They've only been open less than a year. They're at Linktree backslash New Edge Pro. And last but not least is Hook and Catch Wrestling Club, located in Ludington, Michigan. The owner is Corey Octgen, O-T-T-G-E-N. I know him better as C.J. Otis, very prominent Midwest heavyweight champion at one point in time. And we're going to go give a shout out to one of his notable graduates, the Cannonball Alex Steele, who's been calling in and sharing us. So a big shout out to him. Okay. Check them out on Facebook at the Hook and Catch Wrestling Club. And if you got any questions, get a hold of us on our Facebook page, The Fatal 4-Way. Got questions for me personally, look me up at Levi Blue or Sean Grugel. It's easier to look up Levi Blue. And with that, we'll turn it over to Brian Yay. and his Mount Rushmore. There it is. Yeah. <laughs> All right. God, look, I so, look like a potato. <laughs> <laughs> so for this episode's Mount Rushmore, we're going to do the Mount Rushmore of our favorite wrestling props. I will go first. Ooh, heard that fire. Uh, <laughs> That My is, number one. Looks like me farting on her. That's what that noise was. <laughs> God. What does everybody want? Oh. Head. That's a Al Snow's yeah, that's a mannequin one. head. Yep. Number two, <laughs> keeping in that same theme, Val Venus's towel. <laughs> Hello, ladies. <laughs> Man. All right. Number three, an hopefully another one you didn't think of. I went with a money in the bank case. I went Brock Lesnar's The Ghetto Blaster. Yeah. Good, good one. one. Good one. Good and one. then last but not least, the bedazzled Stormtrooper helmet. Oh, oh man. The Shockmaster. The Shockmaster. Oh, God. That's man. a good one, man. Wow. About Voiced you, by Ole Anderson. Um, okay, so mine, mine are a little bit different, uh, of course. So I have to go with my old favorite wrestler, the Repo Man and his tow rope, number one. Nice. 
Uh, number two would be Eddie Guerrero's cars. Yep. Every That's car he brought awesome. to the ring. Yeah. Next two are a little bit different, but they go hand in hand with one another. Chris Jericho's Titan Tron. Because when you had that countdown, wow. that's immediately wow. who you thought of. Yeah. Arms all stretched and that mm -hmm. lighted jacket. And then last but not least, and we're coming up to it, the king of the ring crown. Good one. Awesome. 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 All right. So let me exit, get the head off of there and put this one in there. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, I got the two by four hacksaw Jim Duggan. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I have Scott Hall, the toothpick. The toothpick, yeah. Jimmy Hart with the megaphone. Last but not least, Divine, get the tables. Oh, very okay. good. Very good. Yes, yeah, good ones. Testify. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I went with, uh, I went old school on this one. Class, Shocker. Classy Freddy Blassie's cane. Like it. You nice. pencil neck geek. Nice. Brutus the Barber Beefcake Shears. Okay, okay. Legion of Doom shoulder pads. I almost I went thought that about one. I almost went with that too. Damien. Damien. Ah, brought up Damien. I was gonna oh. put Duggan's two by four, <laughs> but then I had to scratch it out and I'm like, well I gotta go with Damien because I mean he was among the greatest props of all time. Yeah. That's, Wasn't Rhea, the that's Cobra Rhea Ripley's Lucifer? Prop. Was the Cobra? The one Lucifer? that pit. The one up that Macho Man? I think so. Yeah. I think so. I could not yeah. remember the name of the bulldog that the British bulldog. Matilda. Matilda, Matilda that's uh, it. I almost yeah. thought about Frankie that one Frankie the Bird for Coco Beware. Yeah. 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 yeah Bad was. News Brown had a sewer rat. He did. Yeah. Oh, see, now we could just... Uh, hold up, guys. <laughs> 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 All right. Well, we certainly appreciate everybody tuning in here tonight and being patient with us. Joe, thank you for being patient. And once again... Thank you so much to everybody who. Um, <laughs> oh, well, I'm not. <laughs> well, well, just throw it. And then he throw it. it. There we go. Cursed. <laughs> we certainly appreciate everybody who had a hand in this. Q and I greatly appreciate everything. We appreciate you guys for taking time out on your Friday to be a part of this. And we will be back here in two weeks' time. But until then, if you have any questions, comments, feedback, show topic ideas, anything of the sort, Find us over on the Fatal 4-Way Facebook page or go to pfcnetwork.net, the official website of all of our shows, including this one. And with that, go out be awesome to yourselves and to each other, and we'll see you next time right here on the Fatal 4-Way, live on Online TV. Ew.